we bring in our partner, professional handicapper, Steve Fezzik. He's been with us for a decade plus, and he's always got opinions. So we're going to slow roll this a little bit. Of course, pregame.com at Fezzik Sports on Twitter. Steve has no surprise. He has a definitive opinion on what Kyle Shanahan did going into overtime. We'll get to that. Of course, we'll get his take on the side total, how he ended up. But when you sat down, Steve, welcome. When you sat down, you said, it feels like New Year's. Yeah, I, I was in the gym and I was like, I kind of felt like everyone should have done their New Year's resolutions only like the, the, the fiscal year pretty much ends at the end of football. And some people say their fiscal years end at the end of March Madness. So I'm kind of an end of March Madness guy, March 31st, but I can certainly see it that um, right the day after the Super Bowls, you, know, you go ahead and you reconcile all your counts. You see how you did for the year, football betting, and it kind of represents the end of that fiscal year. And you said... The advantages or disadvantages of spending the weekend in Vegas, Super Bowl weekend, where would you start? You know, I think this is a, it's a class thing in terms of class, meaning the upper class Super Bowl is awesome. If you've got an unlimited budget, the parties at the high end are tremendous. The, um, the celebrities are everywhere. I can't imagine a better place for Tom Brady to be than Vegas for Super Bowl weekend, by example. But for the common man... I don't think it's any good anymore on the strip. It's like it's priced out the middle class where it's crowded. Um, And, you know, frankly, the weather in Vegas just isn't nice enough. I was in a Super Bowl the week in Atlanta. And I got to tell you, I hated it because it was cold and overcast. And I was in a week in Miami, and that was good because the weather was really nice. People go to the beach. I think there's a lot to be said for the – I know they're talking about putting Vegas in the rotation – but um, it's hit or miss weather-wise, and it can be nice. But I, I know a lot of people went to the NFL experience at the uh, Mirage, now the Hard Rock, and everyone I saw looked miserable in the 40 degrees. Yeah, <laughs> it was a, there, was, there was a build, though. I think the weather did play a role, and I didn't make my, my way out on the strip this weekend. I don't know if you did, but it looked like mayhem in the best and worst ways possible. Because I think when you come to Vegas, you want a little mayhem. Uh, did you did you happen? Were you on the strip over the weekend and see the crowds? Were, were they crazy? Uh, yes, and you know, people everywhere. And you know, I'll say this about the Kansas City fans: I, they were outnumbered, I think, but they kept saying "Chiefs, Chiefs," yeah. like over and over and over and over again. I, I I was walking through the forum shops, and the NFL experience was I've never seen anything like it. There was waiting, standing room waiting to get into the store because of um, all of the demand to get in there and buy um, jerseys and like. But one thing about that no one discusses, the cost of tickets, I have a take I haven't heard before. Patrick, I'm gonna, like, I think the get-in price was like $7,000 to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm going to argue it was 14000 It was double. And here's why. If your team loses, you basically just piss the money away completely because for the rest of your life, You're not going to say, oh, I had a good time. You know, I went to the game. No, you're going to be like, that was miserable. And people even leave early when their team's losing badly. Now, I know this was a close Super Bowl, so maybe that changes things. But still, it's not a positive memory, right, unless your team wins. So you're essentially paying double. How did Vegas do? It's where you bring up your family. You've been there now for a long time. How do you think Vegas did? I think Vegas probably did slightly worse than a typical Super Bowl, but I've heard reports, oh, Vegas lost, they're in trouble. Vegas, a bold prediction, Vegas will never lose another Super Bowl. Now, they famously lost um, the big upset Super Bowls because the public loves to bet, you know, a, a little bit to win a lot on the underdog money line. And so when you have a situation like the Giants upsetting the Patriots or the greatest show on turf, the Rams, you know, losing... Um, years and years ago to the Patriots. Those sort of Super Bowls were different, though, because there weren't so many props with hundreds and hundreds of different props out there and the public firing on, you know, the needle in the haystack type of props. It, it sure sounds good when something unusual happens. Oh, Jusic goes in and gets the first catch. But then again, C-Max scores the first touchdown and then to just rip up all the, 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 all the money on everybody else that people bet. Vegas will, I will predict, hold. I'll predict they hold 6.5% which would be a healthy hold. Would you guys go over or under 6.5%? I think 6.5%. I'll I'll tell you, Borgata in Atlantic City. Dustin, maybe you can remember exactly what Brennan White at DraftKings said as far as how they turned out. Here's what Gable had to say. I said, how'd it go? He said, and he runs the book there in Atlantic City. He said, not great. Lost on the side a decent amount. One on the total. 
We were big winners to the Chiefs in the future book, so between that and in play, it saved the day. Even props were mixed in a mixed bag with the game going to overtime and lots of players hitting their overs. We won on the bigger prop markets like MVP and first touchdown score. You write a ton of wagers for a small payoff. That's just the way it goes sometimes. And remember, when you to ask a sportsbook director or manager, he's evaluating how his Super Bowl went in the context of what the budget is, what the expectation, because he's, I mean, it's, it's it's expensive. You got to pay all these ticket writers. You got to have all these TVs, and this is your one of your biggest money makers of the day. So, if you're supposed to win as a book two hundred thousand dollars, and that's your expectation for the day, and you win one hundred twenty-five thousand, you're not going to come on shows and say it was a big day for us. We won six figures. You're going to say, oh, we lost a little bit, meaning you lost versus what you expected to win. But how different was your approach, though, for the Super Bowl, Steve? Like from a normal week? Like, what are you? What did you look at differently? Uh, how many more bets or less bets did you have? Because to me, it feels like all the bets are more, I don't know, for, for the casuals to, to mess around with, whereas someone like you, I imagine, kind of sticks to your normal script when it comes to the Super Bowl. Well, I went old school, so I went and, and drove around. So Patrick, like, famously, like, eight years ago, he saw me, like, bolting through the South Pond. It's like, I got <laughs> I, I to gotta go. I got I to gotta get my bets in everywhere. So I went to some books that don't have apps that I normally don't go to. So I went to Treasure Island. I went to the Golden Nugget downtown. And so I, I look at all their props that they offered. It's kind of fun. They have $500 limit. And like 500 is perfectly good for me to you know to bet stuff. Yeah. So um, that I enjoyed that a lot. Like wa just w walking around, something that I just don't do very often anymore. So that was you know one difference. It was I have to say I know my way around town. I know where to park. And like I can only imagine if you hadn't, hadn't been to Vegas and you're trying to drive and navigate the you know the traffic, what a miserable time you could have just getting stuck in the wrong places. Well, I, I saw people online during the game trying to get in-game action down waiting and and I'm just like watching them going I don't know how you come to Vegas and you don't immediately find like the first thing you do off the plane get the card at the casino that you're going to be at for the game and download the app you have to have the apps. You can't be going up to the counter during the game. Let's face it. People in Vegas don't exactly plan ahead. That's why you see, like, such a long line to, like, pull money out of the uh, the, the ATMs. That and charges get charged. $9. Yeah, or 3% or three, 3 right? I, I don't even know. I, I think literally people, like, pull out $3,000 and they get, you know, they get destroyed for, for, for in, in the fees. And, you know, they don't care. They want to be back in action. Yep. Well, and and Steve, Steve Fezzik, professional handicapper, joining us here. Sharp Money presented by DraftKings. So, like you can hear in Steve's Steve's a big logistics guy. He's a big efficiency guy. Uh, when you're living in Las Vegas and you got to get down, he knows the secret parking spots. He he's very efficient. And I bring that up because uh, a friend of yours and one of our fearless leaders, Bill Ad, who of course helped find uh, Veasan, he got to go to the game with Brent Musburger last night, and he wrote about it in Veasan Daily. And you you would love this as a logistics guy. He said, I also need to compliment Brent's military-like planning for getting in and out of Allegiant Stadium. As I told him, you can't get in and out of an Oakland A's game that quickly. Now that, that's Brent Musburger, a legend in efficiency, Mr. Fezzik. No doubt. And hopefully a Hall of Famer, Brent Musburger, one day. day. You know, I'm a huge fan of Billy D. Um, I ran into him in the Legacy Club upstairs. It's like... Why didn't anybody tell me how cool the Legacy Club was? If you have never been to Vegas, write this down. Circus Sports, Legacy Club, top floor. If you were a fan of the old Ghost Bar um, on the Strip or the Voodoo Lounge that was at the Palms or um, at the Rio, this is even better because it's not as quite as much of a party scene. It's just so elegant and such a tremendous view downtown. And so Bill and I were talking there one night early in December for like an hour. And I, I got to tell you, Patrick, that is that is like bucket list stuff. Like look, my, if you said you can be at one place for one hour on the strip, that would be it. Would you agree or disagree? I would say this. I, I'm not saying Bill A.D. goes to the Legacy Club a lot, but I'm pretty sure they have a bedroom off the Legacy Club that is Bill A.D. So, yes, I would say that. And Dustin can answer it better than I because the big guy – now, he's not always dressed for the occasion, yeah. but the big guy's been – 
at the Legacy Club there at Circa many times. I, I took people there. Our friends from Sirius XM were in town. They wanted to see Circa. And I was like, hey, I'm going to show you something cool that not a lot of people really know how cool it is. We went up there. They couldn't believe it. Best bartenders in the whole town are at Legacy Club. Like, legit the best. Not just people who, like, got the license and showed up. Uh, and also, like, you know, I, every date I've taken there has gone out with me again. There's something, <laughs> there's something about having that great view, you know. And so, just stare. You and, just stare. In your neck of the woods, Patrick, when I was in L.A., I used to go in Santa Monica. There was a bar called Toppers that was located mm -hmm. right on the sand, and they had, like, a happy hour, like, on the ninth floor. You could look out in the sunset, and it was just, like, my go-to spot. Give me, you know, average food and, and average drinks and a great view over anything else. And the Legacy Club has great drinks, you know, and that tremendous ambiance. So there's a lot to do and a lot to unpack we'll get to some of the game management overtime take the ball kick the ball we'll get into all that but let's start here just overview on the number okay so san francisco minus one and a half closer at DraftKings. steve they closed 47 yeah i'd say the consensus would be minus two 46 and a half you can fill me in if i'm wrong there w what do you have as far as the closer yeah the closer on the total was 47 so and there's 46 and a half and 47 and a half so how good is that if you had a bunch of outs and you bet the total at post you won it's as simple as that and it shows the we talk about it all the time it rarely is going to matter but when it does land on the number you absolutely have to have the better of it um Yes, as far as the sides, I would say Niners close minus 1.75. I saw minus one half, and I saw minus two. Uh, the game opened as high as for, like, minus 2.8 Niners. All the money on the Chiefs the first day, down to one. Niners got as low as the Niners and minus one. And then some famously, some big six-figure bets on the Niners brought it up to, like, minus two, where it basically stayed all, all week long until the day of the game, there was some big bets made on Kansas City plus two. Patrick, I wanted to m cl clarify, you, you, you introduced me, and you're very nice to do so as a professional handicapper, but even more so, I like to think of myself as a professional better. And the best way to quantify that, let's talk about the money line. Here's how a professional better bets. Uh, on the day of the game, I bet Kansas City plus 123. Boy, am I a genius. But I also bet San Fran minus 120. Boy, am I a dummy. All right. Why did I do that? Because it was a three cent scalp. It was actually available at different shops. Like the South Point went down to San Fran minus 120. So did DraftKings. But I was able to get, like I said, Kansas City above plus 120. Why not? Just earn in both directions. I preferred Kansas City a little bit, but I already had my Kansas City position. And um, this is the one time of the year. I would argue if you have enough outs, we talk about the total. Now we talk about the side. It's like you, you're really playing a no vig because if you shop enough, you could basically break even playing both sides and not be at any disadvantage, which is why it's staggering that the public manages to lose over 5% on this game. Obviously, a drunk monkey on roller skates is going to lose minus 4.5% picking against minus 110 lines. Um, but um, the public trying to research and be informed loses at a rate, you know, a good 50% worse than that. So Tremendous get, information. Go ahead, go ahead. So big guy. when you get to your positions there, how does that impact your mentality for in game, especially when uh, San Francisco goes up early and now you have the bet on Kansas city and now you could possibly get a better number. How do those positions impact your in game strategy? So in game, I can tell you, I love San Francisco in the first quarter. I'm watching the game and it's clear to me. The Niners are not just the better team, the significantly better team. And I'm betting the Niners minus two and a half live wagering throughout the first half. And then the injuries start mounting. Greenlaw gets injured. Yep. Um, and as it turns out, you know, Debo gets banged up. Then Kittle doesn't look right. Um, I think the injuries got the Niners. I, I pre-flop. I said I liked Kansas City. I actually think I had the wrong side and I got on the right side because of the injuries. I don't think the Niners win. Also, I think that the, 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 the Kansas City got lucky. They fumbled five times. They only lost one one. San Fran fumbled twice. They lost both their fumbles. So I think things broke right for Kansas City, but then it goes back to Brady. Things typically broke right for Brady's teams, and now they broke right for Mahomes' teams. As a proposition bet, I wanted to ask you guys, I'm sorry, I'm, Patrick knows I jump around please. too much, and he's he's like, Steve, let's keep it. No, keep, please. Keep, keep, how, give me an over-under on, obviously, he's 1-3. So how many more, we'll keep it simple, how many more Super Bowls will Patrick Mahomes win um, during his career? I think you have to set the number at five and a half. So two and a half more. Yeah. 
I, I was going to set the number I'd set. I would set five and a half, and I would take the over. Now, this is interesting because I think five and a half is a bridge too far. And I was talking to my son about this. He's very smart. And I asked him, what's the chance Kansas City wins the Super Bowl next year? And he goes, well, Daddy, they've won the last two years, and they've won three of the last six. He says, so, he says, clearly 50% is the answer. A lot of people would say, but I think that's too high. I think it's probably only like a third. And the, the fascinating part of this is if you look in the futures odds, Kansas City's currently 7 to 1. Uh, six, six and a half to yeah. one. Okay, so uh, I'll call it seven to one, no VIG. So think about that. So that means if Kansas City, the world double world champion, plays and and it's seven to one each and every year for the next eight years, they're going to win once. And now Mahomes is going to be thirty six, and so I assume that's going to be for the next twelve years. That would set the line to only one and a half. So I think two. If, I would play under two, and lay VIG. In fact. Dinner, when I'm old and gray. <laughs> Dinner says yes. he plays, uh, I'll, t I'll take the under two. It seems so ludicrous because he just won two in two years. It's hard to win the Super Bowl. I would, I would agree. With, I would take, if they did set it at five and a half, I'd take the under. Yeah. I, I'd give him, I, I think five is the number. He's 28 years old. Um, if they say, yeah, I, I would, maybe your maybe your number's better. You and Johnny, yeah, maybe five is the number. Is that what you would say? Well, Johnny would have said eight. But Johnny does not do this for a living. <laughs> um, I, I would say, I would say, if anyone wants to bet me this, I'll go under five minus one fifty. I'll uh, take it over five plus uh, plus uh, one thirty. I'll take it. I, I, he's twenty eight. He just won three. All right, they don't win next year. He comes back at thirty. At thirty years old. Based on what Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers are telling us, that means I have between like seven and like thirteen more chances at this with Patrick Mahomes. I'll take that. I'm glad you brought it up because Aaron Rodgers, what, what, he's got three, four? One. Oh, just one. Very <laughs> yeah. good quarterback. <laughs> hey, yeah, but he's, he's the issue. He's not as good as Mahomes. Well, but, but so part of this, go ahead, Patrick. No, please. Um, a part of this is a self-fulfilling prophecy that you're almost like, well, you know, he's won these championships. You're like, you look at Brady, you know, the, like the Brady-Seattle win. Oh, great defense played by Tom Brady on the goal line. You know, it was, it, it was fluky. And, I mean, they could have lost sure. this game, right? Last week in VEASAN Daily, uh, Billy Walters, you know, commonly known as the best sports better of all time in our little industry here. It, do you think it was a pump fake where he did tell Bill, and it was for free over at vsun.com slash subscribe, he did tell Bill that he was down on the Chiefs. Do you think that could have been a pump fake? Oh, I don't think so. I mean, Bill, Billy's like in his like 70s. I mean, he, he, this is not – he has a legacy, and I think the last thing he's going to care about is one crummy little $750,000 bet because that's, I think, approximately what he bet on, on the Super Bowl. I think he's much more at this point. You know, um, I think that's why he wrote his book and the like that um, he basically has a great story to tell. And by the way, if you haven't read that book, it is it is fascinating, especially the read of how quickly Billy went from broke to millionaire to broke to multimillionaire <laughs> to broke to a big multimillionaire. A uh, whole lot of swings. And basically it, 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 it speaks volumes. You know what? If, if you don't want to be working for the man. Take some risks in life, especially younger, and go for it. As, and, and go for it in, in an area that you love. Uh, let's face it, Billy made a whole lot of money, if you haven't read the book, selling cars just because he was a natural, you know, really good salesperson. Do you believe the sharp people that run in your circles, do you think most sharp betters were on the 49ers last night? No. I think the was a, a, a clear split 50-50. The, 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 the data geeks, the math geeks, like the Niners because of the body of work. And more of the artistic people said, hey, this is LeBron James in the playoffs. I don't care that he's 1-7 against the Atlanta Hawks during the regular season. He'll beat the Atlanta Hawks in the playoffs because Mahomes and Andy Reid, now they play the good plays. And we saw that, frankly, that fourth and one. How often does, does Mahomes pick up oh, that beautiful. fourth and one? 99.9% of the time. Yeah, like, so, Be and, and, and Billy Walters bets the Chiefs because of Mahomes. Patrick liked the Chiefs because of no, Mahomes. No, 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 no. Let's be clear. I thought people crushing those that were taking the Chiefs and using Mahomes as a reason, I, I don't think that's good to bet shame that because, Steve, I think it's very apparent the better defense was the Chiefs, the better kicker was with the Chiefs, and the better head coach was with the Chiefs. 
you know, and it's interesting because they both made a really long field goal, but ultimately they wound up in overtime and San Fran missed an extra point. And I, I get a kick too out of like media, like it's a three hour game, right? And the media like, like writes a narrative in terms of why Kansas City won. This is going to really bug people. You know what? Oftentimes, I use Gil Alexander, the Plinko example. The puck goes, doot, 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 doot. San Francisco wins. Oh, yeah, it bounces out. Kansas City wins. But I want to get your thoughts in the next segment about this, Steve, because if all this about Mahomes is, is true, like we believe that he is the, the greatest or at least the second greatest to ever do it, and quarterback is the single most important position to the line, how are they the underdogs? It's like, well, how? Yeah, we will we'll address it, yes. You know, he's a very happily married man, but he was just giving Dustin and I, you know, I was telling him everything is done through the apps these days. So it's people are so desensitized that when you meet somebody in person, you almost feel like a creepy person. But just saying hi to people, Dustin, you know, that that's true. So Dustin, so Steve was saying, listen, efficiency matters. Here's a couple of tips for you guys. Yeah, I, I think if you were, yeah, I, I get where you're coming from, where you're a creepy person if you approach someone, but like, I think I might actually be a creepy person. That's why I get the reactions Ooh. I get. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think it has anything to do with the apps. Maybe at the maybe the amount of appetizers I've eaten gives them a, a poor perception of me. Maybe that's the issue. Yeah, pr in, in production here uh, during our break, I mentioned to Patrick, I think one of the best tips I could ever give all the men out there is that instead of saying you're an inch taller in your profile, say you're an inch shorter. So if you're 5'10", say you're 5'9". Now, some gals just won't even want to meet with you, but when they do meet with you and they see that you're yeah, actually taller than what you said you are, immediately your first meeting is likely to go better as opposed to, huh, six foot? I don't think so. What did they, uh, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, there's this one artist, she has a song. Olivia Rodrigo? Olivia Ooh. Rodrigo. She, yes. she, she, bad idea, right? Bad idea, that right? Is, Screw yeah. it. It's fine. This You come <laughs> for the sports betting content. You stay for the dating advice from Steve Fezzik. <laughs> now, I... We have mockingly called Kyle Shanahan King Kyle on the show, Steve, because uh, Dustin and others have kind of bought into the trap. I, I feel he's overrated. I, I love the pre-snap candy. I love his offensive scheme. But there is a difference when it comes to game management. However, the overtime rules. Now, I'm sure you heard that his team was not up to speed as far as what the overtime rules were. That's completely, I guess you would say, um, unforgivable from Kyle and his coaching staff for, for them not to know. However, you are on the other side. So for somebody like me, I say 10 out of 10 times, I'm kicking the ball off. I want to know what we have. I, I want to have the fourth down going into it, knowing exactly where I stand. You said the math doesn't bear that out going into overtime. Let me preface this. This is almost like it's complicated, all right? This is, there's lots of things that are slam dunk. You got fourth and goal from the one, you go for it. I don't care if you got the world's worst offense in the NFL. It's the second quarter, you always go for it. Uh, regardless of whether, even if you don't think you're going to make it. Um, this is like two chess masters, like move 17 and, and a dragon Sicilian Yugoslav attack where both sides are checkmating each other. And it's so high level. And then you've got like two two children playing checkers and they're coming over like that dummy played the wrong move there um the bottom line is absolutely you like having the ball second like in college football overtime we like having the ball second we know what we need second let the first guys go if they screw up and they get nothing now we know we win with the three if they get a seven we need a seven so it's a big edge to go second in college Having said all that, and I agree with all that, it's a big edge to get the ball second in overtime. So Kyle should have deferred, right? Not so fast, my friend. There's also a big edge in a sudden death overtime to get the third possession. And how does the third possession happen? Well, there's three ways, but really only two. The first way is you score a touchdown, you kick your extra point. You, I won't go into details. You have to kick. Your opponent scores a touchdown, and they're dumb enough to kick the extra point also. The problem with that is your opponent will be smart, and they'll go for two because they'll recognize, wait, if we kick the extra point, now it's sudden death overtime, and the other team's going to win like 60% of the time, so we'll just go for two. But there's two other permutations that result in ties. Field goal, field goal, or no score, no score, which would usually be a punt and a punt. If those happen... All of a sudden, who's winning? Well, of course, the team with the ball is winning. San Fran would have a huge edge in that case. Now, if it doesn't go three possessions, then obviously 
San Francisco is at a disadvantage. So you can see where it's complex, it's complicated, and I certainly agree that the game script could be such that um, there would be times that I could see that it would be correct to defer. But all things being equal, I'm very confident if you if you churn, churn the numbers, put it in a Monte Carlo simulation, spit it out 50,000 times, taking the ball, in most cases will result in a slight edge. And so I believe, even though Shanahan's players don't know the rules, and that's on them too. How can you be a professional football player and not know what the rules are, even if your coaches don't teach you at all? Um, I believe Shanahan made the right call with what he did. And further, I'll argue all these college football, if it's such a huge advantage to go second with the ball, then why the heck when in college football in the overtime do teams, you score a touchdown, Patrick, the ball, and now, now I score a touchdown. Why am I kicking my extra point? Because now I got to go on offense. They should always go for two and just win the game half the time unless they're like a 14-point favorite. And yet it seems like almost none of them do. Your thoughts? Let's breathe. Did you get all that? See, I'm telling you, I've known them for so long. When you get into that beautiful mind, you kind of have to think faster to keep up. <laughs> Dustin. Your takeaway was Shanahan played it correctly from what Steve said because the third possession is a premium, correct? And yes, and my question about that third possession, as a better, if someone told you I'm placing this bet in anticipation of what's going to happen tomorrow, how would you feel about their strategy? Because that's what that feels like to me. Kyle Shanahan is saying it's not about what I can control right now out of the gates of this first possession. I'm actually playing for two possessions from now. Doesn't that feel like he, he's he's not focused on what really matters? No, I, I think he is focused. And I think but really the right way to say it is I know I'm at a disadvantage. A, a nah. somewhat I'm In the first possession each, I'm at a somewhat of a disadvantage. And it's and it's. Not even likely that we're going to get to a third possession, but should we get to a third possession, my my edge is so overwhelmingly large that it offsets the, the, the disadvantage I'm going to have if we both get one possession. I might add, in terms of perfect information, the field goal is a pain in the neck for Kansas City. I know it's obvious that they can go ahead and go for it fourth and one from their own 28 because they have to score. Yeah. It becomes less obvious. What do I do when it's fourth and five and I'm on my opponent's 20? Now I don't know what I need because, all right, if I kick the field goal, I'm an underdog to win. But you know what? I'm an underdog to pick up fourth and five also. You can see the problem. Sure, and, and all that data, I think, makes a lot of sense in almost every scenario, Steve, except for this one. You're potentially giving Patrick Mahomes the ball and all the control with the ability to beat you in a situation where – all you're playing for is to hold them out of the end zone, hopefully just giving up a field goal. But because of that, it allows them to move the ball down the field to pick up huge yards. But if Patrick Mahomes is God and he's so much better than my team, can I make the counter argument? Oh, my God, if I let him have the ball first and we split the possessions one on one, I'm dead. Yes. He only needs okay, three points. That's fair. I'm done. That's so. totally fair. You let him do it. He scores. Then you have to score. And now he's in the position that that is completely fair. So, so, so you, how that. much how much do you put? Do you, would you at least admit there's some subjectivity here? Absolutely. And Ab you you it, could hear the other side of the argument, the feel for the game, the flow of the game. You, you, even as a numbers person, you would say there is an argument to the other. And there are game scripts where I think it is correct to, to d defer. And like I said, this is an example. This is what's wrong with our country. Everyone is like... <laughs> It, 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 I, I either like can't purchase a handgun or I should be able to own three bazookas. Some was, you know, probably some compromise is needed. Um, and in a situation like this where it's ultra complicated, it's just clear cut. Turn it over to the numbers guys, churn all their big simulations, play the game 10,000 times and let them spit it out. Like I said, and I'm confident on the average typical game, it will be somewhat better, slightly better to take the ball, but it's not a big difference. I believe in this segment alone, Steve Fezzik has covered sports betting, <laughs> he's covered dating, and he's covered politics. <laughs> Find you a guess, Dustin Sweetelson, that can hit that, like that threesome right there. I'm nope. fired. Dustin, take it easy. <laughs> but that is pretty impressive. I did say threesome, so that's not good around Dustin Sweetelson. But politics sports betting and dating. I believe they Steve call Fezzik. they call that the devil's threesome. I think Dustin would be a really fun guy to have a threesome with in, in, in any type whoa, of whoa, form. I'm whoa. just going to throw that out. Whoa. 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 That, that, that crossed the line I wasn't even willing to cross. And by the way, it's a lie. I'm not. I'm not good in a twosome. Ask everyone. <laughs> Some guys... 
correct me if I'm wrong, would, would be better in a role like like playing in a threesome than a twosome. You mean though. like sitting in the corner? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I, I, you're you're the numbers guy. I, I, I like to keep it simple uh, is what I would say. Uh, Dustin, can you, <laughs> can you pose the question again that you posed to Steve? And I want him to think on it. We'll come back and answer it. It had to do with the 49ers being favored. Yeah, yeah. If uh, Patrick Mahomes is the best we've ever seen and if – quarterback position is the single most position in all of sports it, to the spread of a game how does that game go off with the best quarterback we have in the game right now as the underdog three straight games three straight True. games you know a it, tremendous it, point it, plus 130 against buffalo plus 200 against baltimore and now plus 20 120 in the super bowl think how unlikely this is start with a hundred dollars Play the best, play God at quarterback three straight times. You got 1,500. It'll never happen again. You'll never get that, get that again. And by the way, we should give a special shout. I know he's watching right now. He loves the Fezzik spots here on Sharp Money to our buddy Will Hill, who always hits me up. Love when Fezzik's on the show. So shout to our buddy and VEASAN colleague, William Hill. When we come back, the answer is Fezzik here on Sharp Money. Looking for the ultimate sports betting podcast? VEASAN has got you covered. With a wide range of podcasts covering every major sport, we're here to help you make smarter bets every season. Dive into the numbers with market insights and uncover hidden opportunities. And join Gil Alexander on Beating the Book as he previews the biggest betting events with industry experts. Find all of these amazing podcasts and more at VEASAN.com or your favorite podcast platform. Get ahead of the game with VEASAN, the sports betting network. Nobody gets more betting tips and plays than VEASAN Pro subscribers. VEASAN's hosts and guests are professional bettors, and now keeping up with their advice is easier than ever. With pro tips, VEASAN experts give their best insight on air and online every show. And only VEASAN Pro subscribers get them live and can check out our running list on VEASAN.com anytime. Check out the pro tips section of VEASAN.com and get the best of VEASAN in one easy stop. VEASAN, the sports betting network. VEASAN is thrilled to introduce a new VEASAN.com tailor-made to the evolved needs of today's sports bettors. Our upgraded navigation streamlines your journey, allowing you to swiftly access articles, videos, and podcasts. Whether you're tuning in live or catching up on your favorite shows, everything is just a click away. VEASAN.com guarantees a fluid and responsive experience across all devices, ensuring you stay connected wherever you are. We have enhanced tools such as our betting splits and expert picks and introduce innovative features like parlay and odds calculators, all designed to make you a sharper better. Our how to bet section is perfect for beginners covering the fundamentals, while seasoned bettors can delve into our advanced betting strategies for the competitive edge you've been looking for. Sign up for free on vsin.com or become a vsin pro subscriber where you can unlock unlimited access to every tool, expert picks, and insight that make vsin the sports betting network. Let's take a look at the latest in the NBA futures market. I'm Tim Murray from VSIN, the sports betting network. The Boston Celtics remain the favorite to hoist the Larry O'Brien trophy as they sit at plus 320, currently first in the Atlantic division. Jason Tatum leading the way, 27 points per game, 8.4 rebounds per game. Last year's champs, the Denver Nuggets, Plus 450, Nikola Jokic doing his thing yet again. The MVP favorite, 26.3 points per game, 12.2 rebounds, and nine assists. The Milwaukee Bucks now with Doc Rivers on the bench. They sit at plus 475. The Los Angeles Clippers, who have been surging as of late, currently first in the Pacific Division. They sit at 9-1 to one to win it all. The Philadelphia 76ers are 11-1, to one, currently third in the Atlantic Division. And the Phoenix Suns with the big three of Kevin Durant and Devin Booker and Bradley Beal sit at 13-1 to one to win it all. If you think about betting football 24-7, then the Lombardi line on VEASAN is the show for you. Seven days a week, you can watch and listen to the Lombardi line with former NFL executive Michael Lombardi. He gives his honest opinions on every matchup, betting line, and coaching decision to help you bet the NFL. Catch the show weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern and on weekends at 10 a.m. Eastern, getting you ready for kickoff. The Lombardi line, seven days a week, right here on VEASAN, the sports betting network. 
Elevate your sports betting game with VEASAN's exclusive betting splits. Stay ahead with real-time market trends and track bet percentages on any matchup. Then uncover the edge by comparing them to the amount of bets placed to find out where the sharp money is headed. Upgrade to VSIN Pro to access betting splits, live odds, line moves, power ratings, and in-depth game analysis. Go to vcin.com slash subscribe to join VSIN, the sports betting network. This is Sharp Money with Patrick Maher and Amal Shaw on VSIN, the sports betting network. Hey, nobody's better at bonus hunting than professional better Steve Fezzik. Well, this week on DraftKings Sportsbook, new customers can deposit $5 and get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets if your first bet loses. So, essentially, $1,000 free roll. If it loses, you get it back. Download the app and use the promo code VSIN, V-S-I-N, when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. I mentioned Steve. He's here, professional better. Thrilled that he's hung out for the full hour, day after the Super Bowl. Dustin Sweetelson, the bonuses matter, Steve. Let's be honest. It's free money. It's right. almost like, why aren't you getting the match in your 401k yeah. at work? We, we had a big bonus last week through DraftKings with uh, the Super Bowl for, for like bigger clientele who want to put down real money. Strategy with the bonuses, how different is that for you than you know regular bets? All right, so DraftKings, I don't want them to get upset with me, but I'm going to tell you how to optimize your bonuses. So you got to do this. <laughs> Code VSIN. You get a th- free $1,000 in bonus bets, and... You're only going to win half your bet, so it's worth $500, right? No. It's actually worth $750. I'm going to tell you exactly how to monetize it as such. Um, You want to play big underdogs on your bonus bets. And if you want to absolutely just lock in the $750, here's what you do. You play three-team parlays. They pay six to one. So you take team A is playing B, C is playing D, E is playing F. You play all eight combinations of the three-team parlays. So you play team A, B, and C to all win. Then you play team A, B, D. You cover all eight permutations. You bet $125 on each and every outcome. All right? I know this is complicated. You can work it out at home. There's eight combinations. One of them will win. Seven will lose. The one that wins, you're going to wager $125, and boom, that's going to pay six to one. $750 in your account, and so $750 is bigger than $500, so you just turned your $0.50 on the dollar bonus into a $0.75 on the dollar bonus. Now, everybody, deep breath. Let it sink in. That is how you take advantage of a bonus from a professional better, Steve Fezzik. Dustin, your question. Yeah, so when we look back at the Super Bowl, Steve, we had Patrick Mahomes going off as an underdog, yet all we're told time and time again in this industry is quarterback is the most important position when it comes to the spread. How does that happen? Because Patrick Mahomes is worth like nine points to the point spread, Um, by having him out there instead of the backup quarterback. And San Fran, uh, Purdy is like a point and a half better than an average quarterback. So he's, um, I I should have said Mahomes is worth like five and a half points better than an average. So they have a four-point advantage at quarterback. But if you look at the rest of the team, the Niners, I think you could easily make the case, had a six-point advantage for the rest of the players. And frankly, I really think the reason the Niners lost is Kittle got hurt, um, Uh, Debo got banged up and Greenlaw got hurt. I think the Niners would have won the game if that had not happened. Who can, you can't be sure, but it sure feels like this was either team's game and then it was just a war of attrition, too many injuries for the Niners. How'd you turn out once I, you may not even have added up all your bets at this point. This is what Steve does. He bets things and he just throws it into a big pile. Do you know how you turned out? I, 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 and it's funny because one guy on the internet, Johnny is his name and he's like, Fezzik's a complete boob. He has no idea what he's doing. He's like, he can't even figure out whether he won or lost. But it's difficult. It's like, let's say, like, I had futures coming in on the Niners at plus 460, all right? And I lost $4,000 because the Niners didn't win. Well, I didn't really lose $4,000. I lost a lot more because the imputed value of those was, you know, into the five figures. So you can see how accounting-wise, if I took a look at what my portfolio was worth right before kickoff and then at the end of the kickoff, I wound up, I believe, winning a little. I'm not even sure. But you can see it depends how I would account for. Do I grade those Niners futures at face value or do I grade them at what their value was right before kickoff? End of the game. Tony Romo, his immediate instinct was you got to go for it here. Six seconds. You got to take a shot at the end zone. And then they started rushing out the field goal unit, Kansas City. And he said, oh, you got to kick it here. So I think he got a little tied up. 
Steve, what's the right play? Well, Romo is a great commentator, and I, I, I really enjoy him. I enjoy him, Steve. I'm going to tell you it's an unpopular opinion. I thought he did a great job. I, but he, I agree 100%, but he did terrible with this one, and here's why. He, he correctly said, you got 10 seconds here, Jim. You got time for, like, two plays, and then you can kick the field goal. That should be your strategy. Boom, okay, we got 10 seconds. You know what we need to do? We need to run a play that only runs off four seconds because it, it would be highly unlikely we could do it in three. So perfect play call. We're going to play for, for two shots in the end zone. We're going to try to hit Kelsey on the fade in the corner of the end zone. Didn't work. Uh, great um, defensive play. So now there's six seconds left. Now we have compromised a little our probability of scoring on that play because ideally, if we really wanted to score, we would have taken our time, put Mahomes back in the pocket, let him run around for a while, run an eight-second play if need be to maximize our chance to, to, to score. But we want to run a quick play because then we can run another quick play only now with six seconds left, which is an eternity they choose to kick and Romo's like endorses it. He just gave the strat the correct strategy, the best evidence I can give why it was wrong. If you bet the Niners on the money line and there's six seconds left, you're like, please, God, kick the field goal. Don't go for it here. Don't have Patrick Mahomes, the greatest yes. quarterback of all time. And people are like, well, it could have been a bad snap. You know, okay, could have fumbled the snap and turned the ball over. Well, that can happen in overtime also. The bottom line is your chance of scoring is higher than your chance of screwing up and letting the six seconds run off the clock. So you run another play like you did with Kelsey. Now the Sharps can say, well, the Niners can play an ultra-prevent defense where they're just mugging all the receivers at the line of scrimmage and flags can fly, and that's half the distance, and then they got to kick the field goal anyways. And I would agree that it makes harder to score because of that. But then you get a free roll. You see a penalty flag early, and then you can throw it up for grabs. There's a lot going on. They should have gone. They absolutely should have gone for it. I don't know what Romo was thinking. Correctly saying you have time for two shots to the end zone, and then saying you got to kick it here with six seconds left. The best evidence I can give of what, how long six seconds is, the Bengals in the 1980s had the ball fourth down ahead by five points against the San Francisco 49ers. The Bengals had the ball in their own 30. They chose, instead of punting or running ball out of the end zone, they chose to run a sweep, all right? Guess how much time ran off the clock. The Bengals are trying to run clock off four seconds. Only four seconds when their team's trying to run six seconds. Six seconds, and they lost that game, by the way, to Joe Montana on the touchdown pass on the final play of the game. So six seconds is a really, really long time when you know there's only six seconds left. Ironically, six seconds where we'd set the over-under uh -oh. of how long I'd last in a threesome, Steve. The, no. The, what do you mean last? Didn't need to be... Didn't need to be said. Knew it was coming. <laughs> Saw it from a mile away. Um, I've learned from you, Steve. I think independent thought helps as far as the sports better. Thinking for yourself and not following the masses. But also temperament. Removing emotion. I bring that up because obviously people were very emotional about Taylor Swift. As a pro, were you able to get into novelty props? Did you care? What's the take there? You know, I'm going to talk about one. Uh, they had a Swifty. Will, will she have five and a half appearances? And I liked under, and she had way more than five and a half. But I played under 36 seconds, which was a great bet because they went to her oftentimes two or three seconds. I have um, a take no one has mentioned with Taylor Swift. So the Niners have been calling tails all year long, all right? And during the Super Bowl, they called tails to start the game, and they called tails in overtime. Does that not mean that deep down the Niners are, in fact, Taylor Swift? fans oh my do you want to see yourself out or should dustin escort you <laughs> what just happened steve that was that was wild and i loved every second of it and i i gotta tell you steve just as a human being i must tell you it doesn't use the word angelic i'm a big t swizzle guy just so you know okay I don't even know what T-Swizzle is. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Not to be confused with T-Sizzle, ta uh, Terrell Suggs. I, I, I cannot. Very different. If I was, like, in a lineup and I, and I had to, like, identify Usher, I, I would have no chance. I mean, I just, like, I, I, I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know who any of these songs are. So um, I just, I need, like, an answer. I'm, like, so old now. I'm, like, oh, who are you going to, which, like, literally I could bet on the, the first song. I would not even know if I won or not because I couldn't identify it. I thought it was a terrible halftime performance. Did your son and wife enjoy it? We did not watch it. <laughs> I was I, I was betting Kansas City second half um, plus uh, I, I was getting them for the game plus four and a half. So I had I, I was betting four and a half. Wow. Yes. What was the second half number? Was it twenty three and a half or twenty four and a half on the total? The second half total was twenty three point seven five. There's twenty three and halves and twenty fours that were bouncing back and forth. And the under was the play. 
I bet under, unfortunately, under 24, and it landed on 24 until they went into overtime. <laughs> so, so I <laughs> lost on, on that. You know, it's stupid me because it, this is interesting. The one uh, um, conclusion I can make on the totals, I don't care Kansas City, every fourth quarter went under like 18 and one over the course of the year. Super Bowl second halves tend to be higher scoring than first halves. And this puts to rest any other issues because Kansas City was a dead nut under team second half all year long and it happened again. Slow scoring first quarter, first half, and higher scoring second half again in the Super Bowl. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a VEASAN Pro subscriber today.